the following presentation will help patients prepare for the intravitreal injection they will soon receive. This video will provide information on how we deliver medications into the eyeball. This method of drug delivery is called an intravitreal injection or an IVT injection, where a fine needle is used to inject medication into the eyeball. Common medications injected include antivascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, steroids and antibiotics. Common conditions that require the use of intravitreal injections include age-related macular degeneration and polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Other conditions such as diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy as well as retinal vein occlusion. Intravitreal injections may have to be repeated as frequently as every 4 weeks. The duration of injections will be dependent on the disease and the patient's response. This intravitreal injection is performed by our dedicated injectors who are specifically trained to deliver this delicate injection. The actual injection is done within minutes but time is needed to prepare for the procedure. This is the treatment room that the procedure will be performed. In preparation for the injection, we will instill eye drops to numb or anesthetize the eye. This will be followed by iodine eye drops to sterilize the ocular surface. Some patients do complain of a stinging sensation when these eye drops are first instilled. However, to minimize pain and the risk of infections, these have to be adhered to. For most patients, these eye drops do not cause any discomfort. When your turn for the injection is called, our staff will help guide and position you onto the treatment chair. The back of the chair will be reclined to the optimal level for the injection. Please let us know if you feel that the chair is too low for you. Before we perform the actual injection, a timeout procedure will be done where our staff will ask the patient for their name and their INRIC number to ascertain their identity, followed by asking them to identify the site of the eye injection and the medication to be used. We will mark the site of the injection with a tape as well as a skin marking. This is an important safety step for us to ensure that the correct eye and medication is delivered. We will help guide the patient through the procedure using a language that they are comfortable with. As this is a sterile procedure, our staff will be wearing face masks and gloves as they perform the injections. And we request that patients refrain from speaking during the procedure. Just prior to the injection taking place, we will reinstill more numbing and anesthetic eye drops and iodine to sterilize the surface. Next, a small eyelid speculum will be used to help the patient to keep the eyelids open. At this stage, the patient will be guided by our staff to look in a specific direction to allow the injector to have the best position to deliver the medication. Please keep both eyes open and follow the instructions given by our staff. It is important to keep looking at the direction instructed and avoid moving the eye or head while the injection is taking place. The prescribed drug will be injected slowly into the eyeball. After the injection is completed, you will be asked to count fingers shown before you. This is part of the safety check on the eyeball perfusion. Please refrain from rubbing the eye or washing the eye under direct water, example when having a shower or under a tap on the day of the injection. You can resume normal activities the following day, including showering and wetting the eye. While most patients tolerate the intravitreal injections well, occasionally patients may experience some of the following symptoms and signs. Sore and gritty eyes and mild eye redness and irritation. Mild redness and irritation from the use of anesthetic and sterilizing agents are common. These are transient and will usually disappear within a few hours, occasionally lasting a day or two. This can be left alone or the use of any lubricating eye drops will help. Some patients are more sensitive to these agents and may take a few days to feel more comfortable again. 
subconjunctival hemorrhage. This is a localized painless area of bleeding on the white of the eye. This is caused by the needle puncturing a small blood vessel on the surface of the eye. While we try to avoid hitting any blood vessels during the intravitreal injection, the deeper vessels cannot be seen and may be accidentally punctured during the injection itself. This is usually a painless area of bleeding. However, the size may increase over the next few days after the injection. This can be safely observed and will spontaneously reduce in size over the next two weeks. The bright red color will remain even as the area of hemorrhages get smaller. There's no need to use any eye compressors, eye drops or sunglasses for the subconch hemorrhage. This condition will spontaneously resolve and no treatment is needed. You may see distinct bubbles in the eye immediately after the injection. These appear as small bubbles in your visual field and are due to air trapped within the medication. These are harmless and will disappear within a day or two. Floaters may also be observed due to the movement of the jelly within the eye or the vitreous and may be seen after the injection. These two will normally disappear with time. Let your doctor know about the floaters especially if there's a sudden increase in floaters or flashing lights within the eye. Very rarely there will be more serious complications such as an infection or a vitreous hemorrhage. Contact the doctor immediately if you develop any of the following signs of infection or other complications. Pain, blurry or decreased vision, increasing sensitivity to light, redness of the eye which are prolonged and worsening pulling and injection, and abnormal discharge from the eye. The contact information to return for urgent consult is in the post-injection pamphlet that will be passed to you. During office hours, you can return back to SNEC and after office hours, you will need to be seen at the SGH Accident and Emergency Department. Should you need additional information, feel free to approach our doctors and staff for assistance. Thank you for your attention.